Hey guys, it's Nick the Booksmith. Welcome back, welcome back. It feels like it's been forever and ever. <laughs> well, it kind of has been. It has been. It's been over a week, I think. I <sighs> hope everybody is doing okay. I hope uh, you all had a good last week while I was away visiting with company and uh, didn't do anything too exciting. Nothing really vloggable unless you consider going to the mall and eating and watching movies and <laughs> you know all the stuff you do when when you have company so i was boring i'm sorry i was so boring but um at least now i have a minute um, to be able to get back to the office and my workroom and show you a couple of books that are finished. Um, there are a couple more, maybe even three. We'll see if I get the third one finished. But those will be the books that I made during class um, that I'm editing and I'm, I'm on a roll. <laughs> so I got the editing started and it's, it's uh, going along swimmingly, but I still might need those books. So they're not gonna be going up for sale quite yet. Um, because I I still need them to probably film a little um, introduction video and that kind of thing. So we have to wait until I get all the filming edited and, uh, yeah, for those books to go up on the Etsy store. But in the meantime, I have a couple that I can show you. And you saw this one in a previous video. So let's... Uh, Let's go over that one real quickly. So this is a Bookbinders Commonplace book, and it is a repository for all kinds of resource materials and notes and samples, that kind of thing that the bookbinder will need when engaged in their craft. So on the front and the back of the book, you have this embossed uh, frame and then we have this inner frame and inside here is some of my hand marbled paper and this is um, a piece of that ledger and I hand marbled that this past summer and here's another piece of it here on the back and this of course too has another another framing on the back there are metal corners there are ridges on the spine. And then we have a couple of raggedies hanging out to create oh, the illusion that it's got more stuff sticking out of it than it does. Uh, in the book plate, I just put a 1, 9, a 19 for 2019, but uh, this paper is removable, so um, whomever decides they, they want this book, they can put that their name in there or something else if they would want to oh, on the inside we've got um, some more marble paper as in sheets this is an onion skin leaf here and I've done some digital stamping and I've also printed um, on some of the pages some book binder reference materials and so this was like the mail labels that a person would need if they were going to be sending off their books to be repaired at a book binder that is a title page from a book binding book this is a sample of glassine and this is very very old glassine and the tag, the label from the box is here on here. Figured the book binder, this, maybe this was their favorite glassine. And so uh, the label was saved for reference in case they wanted to order that again. There will be lots of illustrations from very old book binding books. There will be advertisements the instructions and the template on that page. 
That's just some digital stamping. It's a quill. And we're going to start getting into some of these samples and that kind of thing. So here is a list of things that a bookbinder would need. And this is just an end page from an old encyclopedia. There's another title page from another book. And that one is from a bookbinding journal. It's the Bookbinders Consolidated Union from August 1864. <laughs> this was from a page where if you wanted to order something, it had the prices for the printing ink. And there's some illustrations from a bookbinding book again. And there. These are schematics for uh, foiling uh, a spine on a book. And here is just a diagram of another foiled spine. Here is one of the raggedies that I made for this book and it has an envelope that is usable so a person could actually tuck some things in there if they choose to do so. And it's made out of all kinds of bookish book binding things. There's a little wax seal and just some neat, just some neat stuff. I'll set this over here so it's not in the way. There are some more diagrams to make foils on spines. There's another title page. Here is um, starting a list of, of things like fonts and that kind of thing. So we get into the samples of different kinds of fonts available from the book binder and what that would look like in paragraph form. And there's another one, cursive script. And some ornamental dividers and borders available. And embellishments, some logos, some pointing hands. Here are a list of paper samples. So we'll get into that a little bit here in a second. So here's the first one, and this is book tissue. This is, this is an advertisement for onion skin from Strathmore. And so attached to this is some onion skin. And then here are some samples of paper with their descriptions. Here are some uh, more advertisements for different kinds of papers. And you open that up and there's some more. A little expense report page. And we're going to get into some dyes and inks here. So this is a recipe for making different colors of ink. This is going to be some examples of, of end papers and marbled paper. So that's what that that's what this page is telling us. So here's the first page of some Italian printed papers. These are some marbled paper examples. Some more printed papers. Marble paper. And then this is library buckram, which is book cloth in different colors. And here is the raggedy that we made in that last video, the little library envelope. Some more examples of hand marble paper. These are just some diagrams on attaching tapes and mull underneath the binding as the signatures are sewn together. And there is a book press, a big one. And just some more, some more reference materials from some book binding pages. There are some blank accounting pages 
to send off for invoicing. And another one here. And this is just a fold out of an invoice that you know, could be filled out for whomever needed to have their books repaired. And then in the back, we have a glossary of book binding terms. So a lot of those were put in, several pages of those. And then in the back, we have some advertisements, just like you would see in the back of a lot of books. And my book plate. And that is that for that one. So no sewing in this one, S so no sewing. This one is sewn in. This is a pack rat journal of sorts. And those of you who have been with me for a minute, um, you might recall my pack rat series that I started a few years ago. And I just thought it would be cool to do another one. And this is a big book. It's an eight by 10 book and it's rather heavy. And on the front, there is a cutaway of a tree and underneath you can see through the forest as the sun goes down through the branches and through the limbs there, a little stream. And, and this book is um, a beautiful sprucey green color. Just, I love this color. Love this color. A nice big book. This, this one's heavy. So inside here, we have some more marble paper and some beautiful antique glassine that opens up to uh, a place you could write something here for the for the title page. There's going to be a lot of digital stamping and a lot of sewing things put together very haphazardly, kind of like some of the pages are their own raggedy. So I hope you enjoy this book. There's going to be like, here's some map pages, which I've sewn on. Um, more digital stamping, some ledger pages, some poetry. And here is just a piece of fabric for a tab. Some accounting pages through here. Some more digital stamping. More there. This page here is a piece of a contact card, a very, very old one made into a sewn pocket. There's that quill again and a poem from Ann Pratt. Here is, let me take that clip off. This is a little fold out uh, envelope or a big one really. And you can untie it. I just kind of wanted it to be rudimentary. So I made it so that it could tie shut if a person wanted it to be tied shut. You could take this twine out if you wanted but it helps keep everything all enclosed. It's easier to turn the page when the clip's on it. So that's that one. And some of the pages are repaired with little pieces of other paper. There's a lot of water staining. And there's a big ledger page with a pocket sewn on, a little tab. There's the other side, I just made it two of them. This is a real tissue thin paper from a, a book of quotes. There's another one. This is a notebook paper and I've sewn on a piece of old dictionary page. More ledger. This is the Raven in its entirety, just lightly, lightly printed onto that page. More ledger and dictionary. This is just some real grungy tea dyed paper with um, a little piece of page from a dictionary and it's the definition of a death cup, which is the that red mushroom with the dots on it that you're not supposed to, don't eat them, don't lick them, don't eat them. Uh, this is another fold out. 
so it folds out and you can write on the inside or write on the back and then fold it back up and again I just I put some clips on it because it's easier to keep it all together but also I don't know they kind of look cute sticking out the side I think here is a piece from um, an old binder an old notebook and I put sewn envelope on the front of that some more poetry on there with you see the uh, blueprint architectural blueprint for a house behind that this is another just sewn on page this is happens to be a book page an Edith Holden book page with some extra sewing and, and extra pieces of paper added on and uh, the little tab with some sewing done with some big heavy silk twine some graph paper and this is the title page from sheet music here's another fold out and it has a piece of dictionary paper and then on this side it is all sewn through you can see all through the other side it's all hand sewn with that silk twine the other side of that graph paper here's a nice big raggedy that I made to go in here and this lifts up in case you want to tuck something in there but lots of haphazard random sewing and there is the back and this right here is from an 80 year old envelope that I added on there piece of my one of my favorite hand marble papers have very little little of that left but very very random stuff here's a little sewn pocket made on this little short page some more graph paper and here it's been repaired with an old piece of ledger some dictionary some ledger with a little collage down here notebook paper this page has a little tab here made from some hundred year old sheet music but this is a just an old office it's a card and it's made for keeping notes on customers and I made a pocket on either side just a little loose little pocket that little things could be added in there there's a map and just some more digital stamping there's another sewn page on here with some repair work down with some glassine the cool little short page with some sewing and some page reinforcements and some more digital stamping there and some branches this is some more of uh, just some old accounting paper and then I made a double little side pocket with this uh, dictionary paper more digital stamping more digital stamping <laughs> this is so this is a piece of that writing ledger and then this is kind of like a little a little leaflet on the inside just a couple of pages that are added on the inside just for attaching photos to or attaching notes to just you know something for interestingness interest interestingness This book has so many pages. <laughs> okay, I think we're almost done though. This is another raggedy I made and it has a pocket made out of some Tim Holtz vellum here on the front. On the spine, you'll see some hand stitching and some machine stitching. And then it is comprised of this blank page, well, kind of blank. And then there's a dictionary page with a tab. And then it opens up to this page that has two pockets on it and this tab over here. 
and then there is what the back looks like. So, interesting raggedies with pages. Some more graph paper and some digital stamping. This was just a short page that I sewed some of the hand marbled paper onto. Some more vellum graph paper. It's all sewn on. Another piece sewn onto this edge. Because when you open it up to this side, then this opens up. So something could be hidden under there. And I think we're about, yep, the end. And then there is the back. So this is a this is a big one. Stick those back in there. So they can be taken out. These raggedies can be can be easily taken out. And as much as I put in here, because I, oh man, this, this book took me forever, forever. As much as I put in here, there's still lots of room. There's still lots of room. As you can see, it's not alligator mouth and totally full or anything. There's plenty of room for additional additions. Additional additions. Okay. Well, I think that is about it for today. I have to get back to work because I am editing that class that I am working on editing. And it's it, since it's so big, it's taking me some time. But these two books will be going up for sale on my Etsy store Saturday morning. And that will be the 26th, as far as I am concerned. <laughs> and I am in Mountain Standard Time, so I will list down below the times that, um, the time that these two books will be listed. And I will also put a link to the World Clock website so that you can check Denver time. I'm the same time as Denver. So you can check and see what time that is and compare it to your time so that that way you will know, you'll know what time it is when the books are listed down below. Okay, guys, I hope everybody has a wonderful week end, end of the week, your Thursday and your Friday, I hope is, is, is good. And I will catch you guys really, really soon in the next video. Bye, guys.